I remember not so long ago, in the height of the pandemic, Pakistan went to England. Yeah. So did the West Indies. You know, they sacrificed themselves and their health to go to England. And now England had a chance to repay Pakistan. They pulled out even before, you know, I mean, I just can't quite understand it. To me, it's like a slap in the face. There's nothing wrong with going to Pakistan. They're wonderful people. Security is, the security is good. So I'm still at, I'm still at a loss you know, as to why England has pulled out. Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to the Kurt Lee and Karishma show. We are so excited to have you along with us. And today, we have none other than former Pakistan opening batsman, Simon Butt. Simon, welcome to the Kurt Lee Karishma show. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to be with you on this show. And thank you, Karishma, and everybody who is organizing this. How yes, are it's you? Very, very, it's very nice to have you with us. And there's so much to talk about. And uh, I think I'll start the ball rolling. Sure. Controversial times in Pakistan, Salman. I yeah. mean, how, how do you feel? How disappointed are you considering that New Zealand and England has pulled out of the Pakistan tour? What kind of an effect will that have on Pakistan? And what's your feeling? Well, uh, my feelings are no different from any Pakistani cricket fan at the moment. We feel let down. We feel uh, that this could have been great for us. We have waited more than a decade to have this kind of international cricket back, back at its full-fledged strength. But uh, unfortunately, it wasn't to be. It didn't happen. And uh, sadly, both England and New Zealand pulled out and for some strange reasons, which they don't want to disclose. And uh, players from England... We were told that players uh, might be spooked because they have been living in this uh, bio-bubble uh, secure environments. But then some of those players are playing in the IPL and the others say that we were not consulted before taking this decision. So we don't even know who to you know, go and ask, why did you take this decision? So this is something uh, which puts us in more agony, not to know what's going on. Absolutely. Yes, I can agree because, it, I mean, I was so excited myself you know, to see international cricket being played in Pakistan again after so many years. And uh, now, uh, now for this, it's really disappointing. And I don't want to hear players talking about the bubble because that's the world we're living in now. And I find it strange for international players to be talking about it's tough living in the bubble. It is. But then they're still playing in the IPL and other franchises around the world. It's the same bubble. So what is the difference going to Pakistan? I, I'm also yeah. disappointed. Yes, uh, very much so. <clears throat> I completely agree with you. And uh, it's almost the same feeling. But as a Pakistani, you're just that bit extra bit hurt because you've waited all this long. You've done all that you could. You know, we had the same security when the future king and the queen were here. And we provide this kind of security, which we haven't seen around the world when we visit other teams. Naturally, people were concerned, but we put our uh, young security personnel on the line for them and thousands and hundreds of them are guarding teams. So there is not a chance that something might come across unfortunate. But uh, I don't know what, uh, what was there, what uh, uh, let New Zealand make this decision because they were practicing every day at the same venue, same place. They were traveling from same hotel to the Rawalpindi Cricket Ground. And it is one of the most secure regions where diplomats live, where there's a red zone, where embassies are. So they were very close to all that place, which is uh, highly secured. So God knows what went wrong, uh, what uh, you know made them pull out of this at the very last hour, just before the game was about to start. It has been a shocker and will remain a shocker unless we really know what really happened. Yeah. I think um, Sir Kirtley and I, we, uh, well, welcome to our show, Salman. So thank you so much, first of all, for joining us. Um, thank you, Garish. We, we discussed this in our previous epi uh, episode, Sir Kirtley and I did. And we've also watched Ramiz Raja's interview as well, and as he was addressing everyone on his channel. What do you think? How should they work to rebuild those relationships? Like, 
what would your chain of thoughts be? Well, I'd say that cricket world is not that big, as big as the football or any other sport is. So we only are eight and nine uh, countries. And even in those eight and nine countries, a few are now struggling to maintain the standards of international cricket, the, the, the way they were when Sir Gertley Ambrose was playing, like two decades nearly before. So at the moment, we need to help each other to grow skill-wise, yeah. to grow as a game. And if in this... Uh, important time we start uh, you know uh, being part of a political uh, situation around the world or do things that does not help cricket globally grow as a game then we are not serving the game and then it is going somewhere else where it is not supposed to go so as a cricketer who has played cricket all my life uh, i feel sad about it because you see uh, we as a nation we travel to places where there has been trouble always we've been there we went to zimbabwe when Australia pulled out in the World Cup, we went to Sri Lanka when there were problems over there. We went to New Zealand when Christchurch was under attack. And then even in England during the Champions Trophy, uh, no, none of the teams they said anything regarding security when London incident happened, when people were crushed under the van and then there were, you know, uh, 48 others who were injured in the heart of London. So nobody said a word. So why it has to be always Pakistan? Yeah. Things happen all around the world. Uh, so it makes us just that bit more sad that why it's only us always. Absolutely. I agree, I agree with you there, Simon, because I remember not so long ago, in the height of the pandemic, Pakistan went to England. Yeah. So did the West Indies. You know, they sacrificed themselves and their health to go to England. And now England had a chance to repay Pakistan. They pulled out. Even before, you know, I mean, I just can't quite understand it. To me, it's like a slap in the face. There's nothing wrong with going to Pakistan. They're wonderful people. Security is, the security is good. So I'm still at, I'm still at a loss you know, as to why England has pulled out. Yes, sir. And... Uh, some of these players are here in the PSL every time when it's been played in Pakistan or in the UAE. So they have all seen that how good a host we are and there is no security problem. And then uh, to make these kinds of excuses. And you know, the worst part is that uh, Prime Minister of England, Boris Johnson, said that he's not happy. Then the cricket board chairman of England said that uh, the, it is out of his hands. And the players say that they haven't been consulted. So who is the person that we need to talk to because everybody seems to be, you know, uh, not knowing that who has called the shots over here. No, I mean, it, it is horrible. And like you said earlier, that anyway, there's only nine countries playing out of which there's only two, three, four that are actually, you know, keeping it up. I mean, India, Pakistan, you know, West Indies, I think if it wasn't for certain countries, because in England, as we know, it is all football. And for this to happen so last minute, I don't know. It just it just ruins the game because sports is meant to bring all of us together, not not divide us. Yes, you see, uh, like Sir said, that West Indies and Pakistan played at the height of pandemic when England were losing about a thousand plus lives every day. It's it's not about you know uh, paying somebody back. It's about being involved in something as a family. You know, you look after people when they are in hard times. When everybody's yeah. in good times, it's really so. a shame. You know, what's going on with teams pulling out of Pakistan? And I hope and trust that this can be resolved as quickly as possible so we can see international cricket in Pakistan. However, Simon, let's talk about something a bit more positive. Sure. Domestic T20 in Pakistan. Tell me about that. Well, it's uh, something which uh, normally our season begins with national T20. Uh, from the last few years, we've started our season from the National T20. It is because then the drafts come along for the PSL. So you need people to have played this National T20 in order to take their performances into account for the franchises to know who are they going to pick and work out what they need. So in that regard, it is also important as this, you know, the occasion coming up as the T20 World Cup in UAE. So it was important to have this. And this is all we have on our hands at the moment. To see our boys, to have them pre uh, get prepared for uh, the T20 World Cup. This is the only thing we have left after the two cancel tours. So we are trying to make the most of it. Uh, at the moment, 
Uh, definitely the place that we are playing in has more bounce and pace than we will see in UAE. So a bit different, but uh, I think when this tournament gets shipped to Lahore, then the conditions would be rather similar to what we see in the UAE and the players would have a better preparation time over there. Well, as a former cricketer yourself, Salman, you know how important good preparation is prior to any tournament. It's really good to see the Pakistani international players will be playing in the domestic T20 to get additional practice and preparation. What do you think are Pakistan's chances in the the T20 World Cup coming up? Well, I think we might see a few changes in the squad uh, because what we picked was uh, entirely a powerhouse and the conditions that they are going to see in the UAE are Go, not going to be very high scoring because the amount of games played over there in the IPL and then the amount of games that are going to be played in the World Cup, definitely those pitch, pitches are going to slow down. So they will require somebody in the middle who can, you know, take the innings along as well. So not all power is going to make it. So I really hope that uh, they do think about it sensibly because the, you will need the experienced guys who can run well as well. You hit a boundary and the next four balls, you need to also take a lesser risk and then score 8 or 9 or 10 in the over because the average scores in the UAE, uh, UAE might come down to 145 to 160 where teams will win in these totals. That's what we have seen in the six editions of PSL and whenever Pakistan has played over there. So you have to think accordingly. And I think if Pakistan can make those three or four change, changes, they'll be a strong side as well. Uh, out of the first three or four, they might be the side to be reckoned with. But at the moment, I think we are relying too much on power hitters. Yeah, actually, which brings me to our next question. Will spin bowling be a significant factor in the UAE in terms of bowlers and how well batsmen counter the spin? Well, uh, again, you have to be good at spin. You have to be having a good footwork. And, uh, you know, you can also have an option of sweeping the ball really well and the Asian batsmen. And now, all the batsmen around the world, they sweep and they reverse sweep and they play all sorts of modern shots uh, to get spinners away. But we will also see the fast bowlers. They won't miss out because if, if the ball starts to spin, you'll also see reverse swing. And we have seen what uh, Nokia of South Africa did in the West Indies. He bowled really well in the death overs. He used the reverse swing to very good effect. And so does Stark and Cummins and Hazelwood, so does Bumrah. So England are pro probably going to be a side who will only have Mark Wood as somebody who will use good reverse swing. The rest of them, they don't have the pace to do it. And if they, I don't know if they have uh, uh, one of their bowlers uh, who plays PSL a lot. I've just forgotten his name just right now. But he's also good at reverse swing. So we will see reverse swing taking the effect somewhere down the line in the World Cup uh, and in the important games and also good spinners, especially the leg spinners. Okay, interesting, interesting. Secondly? Well, um, very interesting. Pakistan is one of those teams, they're very much like the West Indies. They could blow really hot and look the best team in the world or it could be very cold and just look like you don't quite understand cricket. So to be teams like Pakistan and West Indies are so unpredictable, you can never count them out. You can never write them off. So it's going to be very interesting how they play in the T20 World yeah. Cup. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. And that's what the history tells, uh, the Pakistan play, uh, team history tells you, that they will be superb one day and the next day you might just see a different team turn up altogether. But with the West Indies, Sir Kirtley Ambrose, I think they have the edge, especially in the T20 cricket, because you guys have the most experienced players who have played league cricket all around the world, all year round. And if there is some team which knows every place in the world and how to adapt to a T20 and has the most explosive powerhouse, is the West Indian team. So, I, I always think that West Indies in a T20 game is one of the hardest sides to beat. And I, I take into account what you just said, but still I believe that West Indies will be a powerhouse in this competition. Yes, I agree. Because on their day, when they are playing well, they're certainly a tough team to beat. But it's just that sometimes they lack a bit of consistency. But we will see what happens in the World Cup. Tell me something, Salman. West Indies are due to tour Pakistan in December. 
Yeah. Do you think that tour will happen in light of what's going on? I think the tour should happen because nothing happened. It has just been a threat, which is a very, very poor precedent being set because sometime, someday, any team will walk out saying that we have a threat and we cannot disclose it privately or publicly. So what does that mean? So you don't even think about the people who are living in that city. And if there is actually any threat, then the, the, then the agencies, they need to work it out for the betterment of the people. Even if the team goes out, they still need to wipe out the threat. But imagine not telling somebody what, what went wrong is leaving them in some kind of mess, which they are unknown to. So I think uh, this is not a good idea, not a good precedent set. And as far as I know, I roam about every day. Teams come here. PSL guys come here. The West Indian boys have been here. Darren Semi has been playing street cricket here in Pakistan. So, and which is just very close to my house. It's just like a couple of kilometers away where he was playing. So, I think it's a perfectly fine place to come here to, you know, uh, tour Pakistan as a cricketing nation. You have been here. Uh, I don't know how long it has been now. But we would welcome even if you want to come here and see the games by yourself. I think it's a wonderful place. And I, I think they should tour. And I really hope they will. Well, incidentally, I was there last year. I spent four or five days in Pakistan. Enjoyed my time, enjoyed my time thoroughly. It was really, really good to be back after so many years. And I, I believe that the West Indies will tour Pakistan in December. I don't think we will follow suit and pull out. I believe they will tour, and I hope they do, because it can only go well for Pakistan cricket. Yep, I really believe as well, because West Indies are not known to do such kind of things which just happened with Pakistan cricket. Uh, they, they are beyond that kind of stuff. And uh, they come here anyway in PSL. All the major players are here. They know this uh, country inside out. They have very good friends over here. So there is no reason why they shouldn't be coming here. So we really uh, look forward to welcoming the West Indian team to Pakistan. Oh, so man, quick, quick question. Which team players, which team and players do you especially enjoy watching, whether Pakistani or not? And we also know that you have your own uh, show on your YouTube channel about the IPL. So any key players that you enjoy watching? Well, uh, yes, I have. Obviously, I, uh, I enjoy watching Rohit Sharma a lot. He's somebody who has a lot of time like uh, in Zamamul Haq used to have. So he just makes the game look so easy. And obviously, Joe Root is somebody in Test cricket I love to watch. And then Babar Azam is a new sensation. Uh, he's yeah. growing partially into that league. So he's somebody I enjoy watching a lot. Then there are fast bowlers that I love to see, uh, especially when Stark is on song. Shaheen Afridi is somebody, the left armor, who can bring the ball in. And also, I enjoy, uh, you know, some of the West Indian cricket because the kind of player they bring in, when Russell is on song, uh, he is just brilliant to see. And Bravo, with his tricks with the ball, is just unique uh, because he, he doesn't have a lot of pace, but he still has a lot of tricks and he does not allow the freedom to the batters. So there's a lot of good in the world cricket to see. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not naming a lot over here, but I see every cricket that I, you know, I can see. And uh, I have my players in every team that I look out for. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Salman, you obviously made some mistakes a, a long, long, long time ago. And, you know, it was a hard price to pay. Um, you know, it was a hard time for you. Do you think um, that cricket has fully welcomed you back now? Now, these questions have just been sent to me. So do you think you've been welcomed back to now? And what does the future look like now for you? Coaching, media, perhaps? Yes, I've tried my best to do to the best of my abilities, whatever I've yeah. got since I'm back. Uh, I scored a lot of runs in the four years that I played domestic cricket. The last time that I played, I played only nine games and I managed to score 900 plus runs. And still, uh, every now and then I was told that you're going to Australia, you're going to England, you're going to play there. But it never came along. Even on a tour of West Indies, I was told to get ready because you're going to play test cricket in West Indies. But then it didn't turn out to be the reality. So, after uh, thinking a lot about it, I thought that if I'm not going to play for Pakistan, I don't have anything to prove in domestic cricket. It's just like beating the drum again and again and being at the same place. So, I really don't think that cricket welcomed me in a way 
yes there was a mistake yes i had a bad time i paid for it i tried to do everything they asked me to do i did my rehab did whatever the icc said did whatever the pcb said but their response for me is different uh, and their response for other boys has been different so uh, i the good thing for me is i don't think about it that much because if i was to think about everything in detail it would only you know get me uh, in a situation where i i won't be very good mentally so i try to stay away from that kind of uh, thought process so i look at broadcasting i can be you know i i am a good reader of the game that is what i think and i can help people batsmen captains especially strategic side because i've done it since school so i you know uh, i think that these are the ways that i can you know put my energy into cricket and uh, broadcasting is something i've recently done i do this on my own channel i've done expert opinion on television channels and also commentary so i look forward to any opportunity that comes along and uh, don't worry about what happened because it's not in my control anymore i really appreciate your honesty i think that's the most honest answer we've you know we've we've actually even heard but you know you did do your best and you know more than that you can't we're humans you know we all make mistakes and and that's life to be honest yeah you see uh, there's not many times that i come out and i start telling things that whatever happened but my initial uh, uh period to come back after was 5 years so when those 5 years passed i was uh, uh it was supposed to be that my rehab would take place within those 5 years but i was delayed then i was given an, an extra one year i was not allowed because they delayed my rehab not me so that extra year took also it also took its toll but still when i came back i scored the 100 in the first game that i played after 6 years and then it continued uh, i went to the uh, my team went to the finals and in the finals i got 100 in each innings which is the first time ever in the pakistan domestic history that a captain has done so but still after doing all that i couldn't find a place so i thought that then it's better that somebody else comes in whose performances will be worth something and he might then play for pakistan so i took the other route which can be coaching which can be broadcasting and uh, discover myself what i can do uh, you know apart from just playing cricket absolutely that's i mean like i said so honest and i just think in life you can only give it your best and and go where you're appreciated and celebrated to be honest yeah it's you know it's sometime uh, i feel like uh, the world it acts so cruelly to some people because uh, what's the point of giving somebody some a uh, timed punishment if after that time you're not going to receive them the same way it was before and to other people you do it differently to someone you do it differently it doesn't make any sense so either they should have not wasted my time and told me go and do something else i worked all those 6 years i trained every day because i knew i had to come back and then after i came back i scored in every format and still for the next 4 years it didn't happen so yeah. actually there was people along the line who were not being straight to me to you yeah. know i would have loved someone who would have come out with the guts to say that it's not going to happen they just yeah. kept me going along telling me it's going to yeah. happen now 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 and my love for the game took me along those four years as well but then i decided that uh, you know something fate holds for me which i don't know so let's see what that is so hopefully uh, something good will come up it will come out i believe in that and the truth always comes out all you can do is do your best and 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 do what you're good at and eventually i think we all get our dues hard work never fails you know i think yeah. it eventually does pay off so and you've inspired a lot of people and that's all that matters yeah hopefully i i would love to be in that uh, you know considered in that role that if somebody who was who had lost hope and uh, didn't yeah. believe in hard work uh he yeah. must because if it doesn't happen what you intend to do it will happen somewhere else it doesn't go waste it so doesn't it's it's the it's it's the way you look at things and yeah. uh, sometimes you love something to the to the utmost but it's not good for you and you don't know that yeah. so we might discover that somewhere else down the line but not at the moment certainly till now i haven't but i'm sure something else will come up well salman It was yes. really a pleasure talking to you and we just want to wish you all the very best 
in whatever you choose to do, whether it's commentary, coaching, give back that knowledge to cricketers. Yep. Um, we just want to say that it was really a pleasure having you on the Kurt Lake Harishma show. And I'm quite sure that we'll call on you again sometime. So between now and then, you just stay confident, be positive in what you're doing, and we wish you all the very best. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to both of you. And it is great to be part of a show with you who I just grew up watching playing against Pakistan. I always thought you were very hard to get away for our batters. And certainly you are a legend. And I hope to be, uh, I'm honored to be here and I hope that I'll be here again. And if I request you sometime to be part of my uh, YouTube program, so I would love if you could spare a few minutes for me. I certainly will. I certainly will. And thank you very much for those kind words. You take care of yourself. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Take thank you, sir. Mind. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. Yeah.